Hey, fourth grade, our next lesson is going to take up two pages. We're on module five, lesson 33, and today we're gonna to be subtracting those mixed numbers. And we will especially be focusing on the strategy of the air away. So pause this video if you need more time for your notebook. Otherwise, let's get going. Our objective today is that we can subtract one mixed number from another mixed number, specifically using that arrow away strategy that we talked about yesterday. Remember, it's literally called the arrow away because we use those arrows to take one piece away at a time or to add one piece at a time. This is what the arrow method looks like for subtraction. Take a moment, turn and talk with the people around you. What do you notice about this strategy? How would you describe it to somebody who's not looking at it? And hello, why do you think it's called the arrow way? You probably noticed that they took the number 17 and broke it into its place values. You also might have noticed that the point of doing that is so that you can get to these anchor numbers that are much easier to subtract. Instead of focusing on regrouping the tens and the ones, you just take away one group of 10 and subtract your ones to only regroup one time. And again, remember, it's called the arrow way because we use the visual of an arrow to show little increments at a time. So let's practice what this might look like with mixed numbers. We're gonna start with five and five twelfths as our whole number that we're taking away from. That's why it's at the start of this number sentence down here. Our first step is let's subtract your whole number, meaning let's take away three, from five. I'm just gonna be looking at those whole numbers. So on my first arrow, I'm gonna show my first step is that I'm taking away that whole number. Five and five twelfths, take away three, leaves me with whole number two. Since I haven't done anything to my five twelfths yet, it's still remaining with my whole number two. So now I've done my first step. I've taken away one easy chunk of that number. Now we're gonna notice that we still need to take away eight twelfths. We took away the three, we still need to take away eight twelfths. Let's decompose eight twelfths into five twelfths, since that's how many twelfths we can take away from this whole number. That's how many twelfths we have in two and five twelfths. Instead of worrying about taking away all eight twelfths at once, let's break down that eight twelfths into five twelfths, and whatever it is that's left over. Eight, take away five, equals three twelfths. Now we're gonna take away these fractions one piece at a time. I'm gonna start by taking away those five twelfths, since that will just get me to the whole number two. Two and five twelfths, take away five twelfths, leaves me with just my whole number. Now I'm gonna take away the leftover twelfths that I haven't taken away yet. If you guys remember, when we take away from a whole number, we are left with one less of that whole number, and we take that away from one whole group of the unit fraction. So I can break down two into one and 12 twelfths. I'm going to take away my additional three twelfths. And that leaves me with one whole and 12 twelfths take away three twelfths. 12 take away three leaves me with nine twelfths. Now this might feel a little rusty for us because this is a new strategy. So let's just practice three more times and get a little bit more automatic with it. Four and one sevenths take away two and four sevenths. And I've set up our arrow away equations down below. Our whole number is four and one sevenths. And our first step is let's subtract the whole numbers. So instead of subtracting all of two and four sevenths, I'm only going to take away two minus two. 4 and 1 7 minus 2, I'm only focusing on the math fact, 4 minus 2 leaves me with two wholes and the remaining 1 7 Now I notice that I only want to take away 1 7 to get to my next whole number. If I take away 1 7 that gets me to 2. 
but it wants me to take away four sevenths. So let's decompose four sevenths into that one seventh that I really want to take away and what's left over. Four sevenths, take away one seventh, leaves me with three additional sevenths. Now that we've decomposed it, let's take away that one seventh. Two and one seventh take away a seventh, leaves us with two. And now that we're at two, we can take away our three sevenths. So where does that leave us? Like we've practiced last time, that means that this number goes down by one whole, two becomes one, and the leftover fraction is how many more pieces we need to make a whole. How many more sevenths does three sevenths need to become seven sevenths? And that's four sevenths. Let's practice again. Subtract your whole number. I'm starting with five and three eighths and I wanna take away two and five eighths. My whole number in two and five eighths is two. So I'm gonna take away two which leaves me with three and three eighths. I really want to take away only three eighths, but it wants me to take away five eighths. So let's break down those five eighths. Let's decompose our five eighths. I'm going to decompose it into those three eighths that I really want to take away. And what's left over? Five eighths, take away three eighths, leaves me with two eighths. So I'm gonna take away those three eighths that I wanted. Three and three eighths, take away three eighths, just leaves me with the whole number three. And now I'm gonna subtract those leftover eighths. Three eighths, take away two eighths. When you have a whole number, take away a fraction, you're gonna go down one in the whole number. Three, take away one is two. And the fraction left over is how many more you need to make a whole. Two eighths needs how many more eighths to make eight eighths? It needs six eighths. One last time. We're starting with three and two fifths and we're gonna take away one and four fifths. Start by subtracting your whole number. My whole number is one in one and four fifths, so I'm gonna take away one. Three and two fifths, take away one, leaves me with two and two fifths. I really only wanna take away two fifths. That'll get me to two, but they want me to take away four fifths. So let's break down those four fifths into two fifths and what's left over. Four fifths, take away two fifths, equals two-fifths. Now let's take away those two-fifths, minus two-fifths. Two and two-fifths, take away two-fifths, leaves me with the whole number two. Now that I've taken away the one, and I've taken away two-fifths, I'm gonna subtract our leftover fifths. Two, take away our additional two-fifths. That's one less in the whole number. Two, take away one is one. And how many more fifths I need to make one whole? Two fifths plus how many more fifths equals five fifths. And that's three fifths. One and three fifths. Now you'll start to feel more comfortable with this the more that you practice. So now it's your turn to crack open that problem set.